Hello, my name is Jamil Evans, and on behalf of the Office of Justice Programs, Territories Financial Support Center, I want to welcome you to our video presentation on indirect costs. Why is this topic important? Understanding how to properly charge indirect costs to a program ensures compliance with established budgets and financial reporting regulations. Failure to comply could lead to suspension of program drawdowns and even future grant awards. In this video, you will learn the importance of properly calculating indirect costs, the difference between direct costs and indirect costs, how to identify examples of indirect costs, and the basic process for seeking indirect cost rate approval. An effective written cost allocation plan explains in detail the allocation methodology for various cost types and the allocation of direct and indirect costs. What is an indirect cost and how is it different than a direct cost? Indirect costs are costs of an organization that are not readily assignable to a particular project, but are necessary to the operation of the organization and the performance of the project. Indirect costs are usually referred to as overhead costs. Example of costs frequently treated as indirect costs include facility or building maintenance, telephone expenses, general supplies, depreciation, rental costs and leases, salaries and benefits of certain employees. For example, those who work benefits the entire organization. Please remember that transferring funds into or out of the indirect cost category requires budget review and may require modification of the approved budget. Recipients must promptly contact OJP if there is any change in the approved negotiated ICR to be applied under the award. A direct cost is a cost that can be specifically identified with a final cost objective. In other words, these costs can be attributed directly and are easily traceable to a particular service, product, or grant program. By contrast, indirect costs are difficult to trace to a specific cost objective and are usually attributed broadly through allocations or cost rates. For example, costs that are directly associated with a specific grant or contract may include direct labor salaries and wages and allocable fringe for programs employees, travel of said employees and their program supplies, and postage, printing, communications, equipment, rentals, and other costs directly associated with the program. You should always keep in mind that a cost may be assigned to an award as a direct cost if another cost incurred for the same purpose in a similar circumstance has been allocated to the award as an indirect cost. Therefore, maintaining a specific and clear record of all direct costs incurred is essential for budgeting and reporting purposes and ensures that overall cost tracking is well executed. Now, let's talk about ICRs. This is the amount written as a percentage a grantee determines must be applied to direct expenditures for the entity to recover the costs associated with administering programs, functions, and activities. Indirect costs are allocated using an ICR. I want to highlight two types of ICRs. Your organization can either use the de minimis ICR or establish a negotiated ICR with your cognizant agency. Whichever ICR is used, it will apply across all federal grant programs that an organization operates. Selecting the best ICR is an important decision that impacts the budget of every federal grant your organization receives. Selecting the best ICR for your organization involves evaluating the benefits and disadvantages of each. The best ICR is the one that allows your organization to operate programs without leaving resource funding unused or needing additional funding to support costs. Now let's talk about the two types of ICRs. First, what is the de minimis ICR? 
an award recipient that proposes to use federal grant funds to pay for indirect costs may elect to charge a de minimis rate of up to 10% of its modified total direct costs. The MTDC is used to calculate the de minimis ICR and includes all direct salaries and wages, applicable fringe benefits, materials and supplies, services, travel, and up to the first $25,000 of each subaward, regardless of the period of performance of the subawards under the award as defined by 2 CFR 200. The 10% de minimis ICR may be used indefinitely. It can also be used by any non-federal entity that has never received a negotiated ICR. This rate would be charged against modified total direct costs. Now, let's talk about negotiated ICR. An ICR is an agreement the entity enters with the cognizant agency to determine the entity's allowable ICR on direct expenses paid with federal funds. So how do you calculate an IC? Indirect costs plus direct costs equal total project costs. For the indirect cost calculation, a base amount is determined by adding together all direct costs minus any items which are exempt from the IDC costs. Then you would take the base amount and multiply it by the indirect cost rate to get the total indirect costs. An organization can calculate the indirect costs by applying the rate using the detailed negotiated agreement base such as total direct cost, modified total direct costs, total direct labor cost, or total salary cost. If the indirect cost rate is calculated on a total direct cost basis, then all budget items are included in the indirect cost calculation. If the indirect cost rate is determined on a modified total direct cost basis, then some costs are exempt when the indirect costs are calculated. Here are some additional helpful tips and reminders as you work on a negotiated ICR. When you apply for a negotiated ICR, your organization must also receive an indirect cost certification from a cognizant federal agency. It's also important to know that a negotiated ICR is only applicable during the current fiscal year of the organization. It may be extended for up to four years, but cannot be renegotiated until its term has expired. These dates are subject to change, so please consult with your grant manager. Any non-federal entity that has a federally negotiated ICR may request a one-time extension of the current negotiated rate for a period of up to four years. This extension request is subject to approval from the cognizant agency for indirect costs. If the extension is granted, then the non-federal entity may not request a rate review until the extension period ends. At the end of the extension period, the non-federal entity must reapply to negotiate a new indirect cost rate. Subsequent one-time extensions up to four years are permitted if a renegotiation is completed between each extension request. Regardless of what ICR method or allocation plan you choose to apply for, you should be aware of the following. Generally, if an indirect cost proposal is not submitted within 90 days after the award date, indirect costs may be recovered for the period prior to the submission of the proposal. If a federal awarding agency has a proven ICR or allocation plan, then another awarding agency must accept the same ICR or allocation plan, provided that the rate or plan is current and based on allocation methods in accordance with the OMB uniform guidance. There are limited circumstances where a federal agency may deviate from negotiated rates, as discussed in 2 CFR 200.414, Indirect Costs. A non-federal entity that has a federally negotiated ICR, which has expired during the funding period, cannot draw down funds budgeted for indirect costs until a new rate is approved and a copy is submitted to the awarding agency. I hope you found this short presentation helpful. ICR proposals can be challenging because they require a lot of time to prepare, attention to meticulous detail, annual reconciliation by fiscal year, knowledge and skills to develop and manage properly, 
and that you maintain a list of specific and clear record of direct costs incurred. Please let us know if we can be of any support or assistance. We are happy to share our materials on indirect costs, including our direct and indirect cost guide sheet and job aid checklist. For these resources, or if you need technical assistance, please visit our website at www.ojp.gov forward slash TFSC or contact us at OJPTFSC at usdoj.gov. If you would like to stay up to date on our videos, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.